history of suffrage is very long and it is checkered. And getting into this, you learn that it's complicated. So while on paper, all women were given the right to vote um, all across the country um, in 1920, lots of women weren't able to vote because of barriers, uh, especially um, black women, indigenous, indigenous women, um, other women of color and other marginalized communities. Um, and so this year, we're, folk, we're really giving an opportunity, our program focuses on the experiences of, of not the white woman, especially the middle-class woman. Um, in some ways, I feel a little strange talking about this. As a, as a white middle-class woman, but um, our program really is lots of indi individuals, all but um, Annette Gordon-Reed, our Vermonter, is living in Vermont, who have experienced voting from a different perspective. Annette Gordon-Reed is, is African-American. She is a native of Texas. Um, she is a noted historian as um, she, her book, The Hemings of Monticello, An American Family won a National Book Award and the Pulitzer Prize. And, and she also has a recent book on June 10th and she will be the keynoter. But we have um, a Native American speaker, Melody Mackin. We have um, Mia Schultz, who is the president of the Rutland area NAACP chapter um, and also works in, in advocacy for, for voting rights and equality. Uh, she's the MC. She's really gonna sort of weave together all the different elements of the program. Um, she is also, also African-American. We have uh, a poet and storyteller, Ferenc Paris Mayer. Um, we have a a vocalist, popular and well-known vocalist, Nicole Nelson. Uh, and we, ha we have an artist and she has started a painting called The Light of Truth Upon Them. And this is commissioned by the League of Women Voters uh, Vermont Education Fund and the Suffrage Alliance. Um, and she has started that, but she's gonna continue working on it at the event on August 14th, Saturday. Montpelier, three to five on the state house lawn. It's free. Bring your own chair or water. Um, there, there aren't going to be any vendors there. Um, and the rain site is actually in the house chamber in the state house. So she's going to she's going to be actually continuing the work on her painting at the event. Um, we have a. Um, a woman who's retired from Jean Silva from the UVM uh, College of Medicine, and she's gonna speak on gender inclusion. We have two high school students who are gonna read personal essays um, about voting. Um, so it's, it's really gonna be um, a very uh, full program with perspectives that we believe a lot of people don't hear. Um, in Vermont all that often and that are part of our wonderful Vermont community and that we believe should be should be heard. Uh, it's been fun to sort of observe this coming together uh, uh, by, by people who have different experiences and are willing to share them. We also have a filmmaker that's going to film um, film the event plus it's going to be filmed by uh, Orca which is the um, public access station in central Vermont. We should be proud. Um, we have both with same day voting on, on the uh, day of the election, with which includes same, same day registration. We can register online. Uh, people that are incarcerated can register by uh, absentee. Um, high school students that are going to be 18 by the time of the election, or they don't have to be in high school, but individuals who are going to be 18 by the time of the election can, um, or by the time of the primary, can register and vote. Um, and we have very um, 
expansive early voting. You can, uh, in fact, the, I believe it's optional for the towns. They can send ballots now to everybody or they can use the um, system before where you could request an early ballot or you could just go into your town or, or city clerk's office and, and get your ballot right there and vote and, and hand it in. Um, so now compared to other states, um, probably the state that whose proposed changes are the most troubling, and I'm not an expert on them, but uh, is Texas, but there have been changes in Georgia. The one in Texas has not yet been enacted. Um, that's an ongoing um, contest, I would say, between those that support it and those that don't. Um, and then um, the Supreme Court has um, essentially supported some, I would say, some negative um, conditions for voting in Arizona uh, that I, I believe that decision is, is not a good one for really improving access. Uh, especially with uh, our indigenous population, which is very large out there, and they don't have a lot of post office boxes around or, or um, to mail a ballot back or voting places. I believe they're really limited who can take a mail in ballot to, to a um, voting place. So um, it's, it's a difficult time for voting rights in many parts of the United States. And that's another thing we really want people to be aware of that. And there are ways you can you can get involved um, in trying to help things be as good as they are in Vermont. People don't have a lot to um, complain about in Vermont, especially when they think of what's happening elsewhere. So it's it's pretty good in Vermont. Well, Sandy, thank you. I know that the League of Women Voters is often unsung, but that you have supported open elections and widespread voting opportunities and that the Vermont Suffrage Alliance is another outgrowth of that work and focuses on, you know, a hundred years of suffrage for women, but not for everyone and how hard fought that those rights still are today. So thank you for bringing our attention to that and creating this celebration with your colleagues and we'll look forward to seeing the August 14th event. Great, I hope you can come and everybody that's watching, I hope you come too. But if you don't come, it'll be on various public media um, channels, I'm sure. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Sandy, and we'll talk to you again. Good, thank you. Have a good day. You too.